entries, and they just added it into data. That would be a good example of customization. In addition to customization, you have what is essentially the opposite approach, which is subsetting. You look at this list and you say, you know what, we don't do screen, which is really for sort of mainframe green screen kinds of things. We don't do code blocks. We don't do syntax diagrams. We don't need preformatted text. And we don't need message blocks. So what you can do with these, when you subset is simply remove, in this case, those one, two, three, four, five elements and say, these are not allowed. I'm just going to take them out. So you can simplify your data content and set it up so that it is much easier to work with because you have fewer elements. Your writers are not looking at a bunch of irrelevant elements that, they're not, that are not needed in your content and that they're not supposed to be using. So subsetting allows you to simplify data. There are some limitations to this. You cannot, for example, take out the title element that is required at the top of a topic. If you do that, bad things will happen. But you can certainly take out some of the optional elements if that's something that you want to consider doing. And we do recommend subsetting if you're certain that you will not need these elements. And finally, we have specialization. So what you do with specialization is you create the warning, caution, and the sidebar that I mentioned earlier. But instead of creating them outside the data content, you create them as instances or subsets or specializations of an existing data element. So a warning is a specialization of note. A caution is a specialization of note. And a sidebar could be a specialization of section. So that's how you work around those things. All right. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the business case for XML in general and then the business case for DITA. I'm sure you've heard the business case for XML. You exchange content with your people. You get um, application neutral content, which means, for example, you can move from a FrameMaker-based XML to an Arbitex-based XML to an X metal based XML relatively easily. You don't have proprietary binary files. You can use XML for database publishing. You can extract information out of a database, mark it up as XML, and then publish that content via XML transformation. You can reuse content, reduce duplication, and reduce your costs that way. You can produce or uh, support automated formatting and publishing. That's particularly important if you have localization because you have then more automated publishing. And you can get compliance. If your vendor, or sorry, if your customer, if you're OEMing software for a particular customer and they come to you and say, you must deliver in this format, well, then it becomes a compliance issue. If they say you must do DITA or you must use S1000D, then that's just what you have to do. So those are kind of the big five reasons that people move to XML. Beyond XML, we can look at DITA and say, well, if you go to DITA, you might have less effort in terms of content modeling. You don't have to go through and produce the content model, build it from scratch, go through and test it. You can take advantage of what a bunch of very smart people have already done and use that content model on the assumption that if you're creating content, technical content, that's sort of generally in the same vicinity as what they were designing for, then DITA will probably work for you. So you can reduce the content modeling effort. You can make content truly portable. And what I mean by this is that if I'm using XML standard A or even custom XML version A and you're using custom XML version B, we may not actually be able to exchange content. I can send you my content and you can read it because it's text, but it's not compatible with your XML structure. So if we're both using DITA, even specialized DITA, we will be able to exchange content, which is helpful. DITA does have several features that uh, are going to sustain that. OK, so sorry, I do have some slides on this. Content modeling. Um, if the DITA structure is a reasonable match, you can probably reduce your content modeling effort, speed up your transition to structure. If it doesn't match, you're going to have some issues. And I think I would start by asking the question of, does your industry have special requirements? Can you work around some of those things? You can make your content portable. 
If you need to send it to a customer vendor, other department, if you both standardize on DITA, then you have a pretty good shot at getting the content moved over. So that can be really actually quite helpful. Content reuse. So if you have map files and you have CONRAFs, then you have some pretty decent uh, techniques for working through content reuse and figuring out what you might want to do there. And finally, we should probably take a look and think about software support. Um, the XML authoring tool vendors have made it a priority to support DITA. In fact, some tools support DITA only and will not support generic XML. Um, there's a pretty simple reason for this. It's actually much, much easier to implement support for a known set of tags than it is to implement support for generic XML. It's also worth looking at the fact that uh, some DITA authoring tools do not necessarily support specialization. They'll support general DITA, but not specialized DITA. That is especially true of some of the hosted solutions that are out there. DITA is going to give you a huge pile of output options, which I've listed here. They give you a good starting point for output, and certainly it's easier to start from there than to start from scratch. But it really is important to point out that they are not suitable for production. The PDF that you get looks really pretty bad. The HTML that you get out of the box is, you know, it's unattractive. It's just not very good. And if you need to go in there and customize it to make it look the way you want your HTML to look based on your corporate standards, you are going to have a pretty difficult and time-consuming kind of effort in front of you. So it's worth keeping in mind that although it does give you output, um, you know, again, the word rudimentary probably applies, so that's something to consider. So is DITA right for you? Should you be using DITA? There are a couple of ways of answering this. If DITA meets all your requirements, then, then yes. You know, if it does what you need it to do and it's good enough for what your requirements are, then certainly go use DITA. It's probably almost certainly going to be cheaper than any of your other options. If a business partner or a customer requires DITA content from you, that would make an obvious push towards yes. If you have to single source and you have not yet implemented single sourcing, then I would definitely look at DITA and consider it. If you have no existing content, if you're a new company and you haven't written any content yet, or you're starting a new product and you want to start over, you're not going to be able to leverage any of the content that you currently have, definitely worth considering DITA in that context. And finally, if you're flexible with your markup, if you're willing to go to DITA because you think it's close enough, even if it isn't exactly what you've been doing, then yeah, look at DITA. It will make your implementation faster and cheaper, so that would definitely be a plus. Now, we can look at the other piece of it. Uh, you should not move to DITA. DITA is not right for you if your content must conform to a specific standard that is not DITA. For example, S1000D or the aerospace, the ATA standard, or something like that. If, if you've been told to produce S1000D, you clearly should not move to DITA. If your content is narrative, then I would really probably advise against moving to DITA. I would take a look at DocBook and some other things, but I would probably stay out of DITA. And if your semantic requirements, if your tagging requirements are industry specific, very complex, and very strict, those are all factors that would make DITA implementation more expensive and more difficult. So if those three things are the case, then you really need to think hard about whether DITA is going to work for you, about whether that's going to be the right approach. So then, of course, we have the it depends, maybe. And this is usually where most people fall. It's not an exact match. It's not quite right. Some customization or specialization would be required. At that point, you have to look at how much customization, how much specialization, how much stuff do you need to do, and if, if that, does that effort outweigh what you're trying to do there? And um, that's something that you have to look at on a case-by-case -case basis. We have had people who have looked at DITA and said, you know, it won't let me do X, Y, and Z, but I don't care. I'm willing to give those things up because it's going to be close enough. 